Hello everyone, welcome to the this podcast, your ultimate resource for developing a successful veterinary practice and career. I'm Naren Arul Raja, the founder of the Veterinary Business Podcast and one of our co-hosts. On this podcast, we bring you insights and expertise from industry leading doctors, experts and thought leaders. We cover a wide range of topics, including practice management, marketing, finance, leadership, HR, AI, law, and much more. Whether you are a practicing veterinarian, a practice owner, practice manager, or a student starting to be a veterinarian, this podcast is tailored to help you navigate the unique challenges and opportunities in the business of veterinary medicine. Every listener to this podcast is welcome to visit veterinarybusinessinstitute.com for additional resources and tools to support your growth. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, YouTube Music, Spotify, and other popular podcast platforms. I'm incredibly excited to have Dr. Megan Kelly with me. She is a true triple threat. She is a qualified veterinarian, registered veterinary nurse, and a certified veterinary rehabilitation therapist. Her passion for all aspects of animal well-being is clear, and it extends far beyond the walls of her practice. Dr. Kelly founded Online Pet Health, a fantastic resource for pet owners, and she even hosts the popular veterinary rehabilitation podcast. As someone who thrives on learning and loves sharing knowledge with others in the field, I can't wait to dive deep with Dr. Kelly today. Our topic for this episode is... uh, particularly relevant. It's how veterinary professionals can diversify their income online. So Dr. Kelly, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Naren, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, before I jump in, can you tell me a little bit about you? How did you get into veterinary medicine, your story? Yeah, so I was one of those young um, little girls that loved horses and I always wanted to be a vet. So from when I was very, very young, it's the only thing I ever wanted to be. And when I got to school, um, I actually had a guidance counselor who, when I was probably about 13 or 14, completely crushed me and told me that I wasn't clever enough to ever be a vet and I needed to consider other options. And um, I was absolutely devastated. And I, that's actually how I got to do veterinary nursing first. So I decided, well, if I can't be a vet, then I'm going to be a veterinary nurse. And so after school, I applied to veterinary nursing, got in. And in my very first year, there was an amazing professor. His name was Prof Berry. And he was so inspirational. And um, when you were in clinics, you know, as a vet nurse, they, they would always say, oh, does somebody want to put this catheter in or or put a um, do a urinary catheter or do some some procedure and as a vet nurse you're not usually the ones who are putting your hand up but I was always putting my hand up saying I'll try I'll try and he said to me you should be a vet and so I finished my veterinary nursing and then went on to study a bachelor of science first year and applied into veterinary and got into veterinary so it was a little bit of a longer journey um, but um, yeah I did it in the end and obviously achieved the dream of being a vet. Great. And then um, did you go into private practice right away or did you work for somebody? Tell us the rest of your story. Yeah, so I I actually went to the UK. So I'm born in in South Africa and I studied up in Pretoria. And um, it was a great opportunity to be able to travel and to earn some foreign currency to pay off my student loans. So I went to the UK and I worked there on an amazing little island called the Isle of Wight. So I was there for about two years. And then I headed up a one-man branch um, just south of London. And that was I was there probably for another two years or so. And then I started to get an interest in veterinary rehabilitation. And it, it actually came about from a patient of mine. And um, it was a four-year-old Labrador. And um, she was on painkillers and anti-inflammatories. And she had been um, treated by the vet previously um, that was working at the place that I was working at then and this dog came in the one day and just vomiting up um, blood and this dog had gastric ulceration from overdose of anti-inflammatories or just continuous use of anti-inflammatories and I was just so devastated I just thought well this this can't we have to have something else that we can do for this dog because 
you know, she's only four years old and she's obviously not going to be able to have anti-inflammatories long term, even if we give a gastric protectant or something. And so I started searching for other ways in which to manage pain and pets. And that's when I stumbled upon veterinary rehabilitation. And there was a course, um, and at this stage, it was only actually available at the University of Tennessee. And so um, it was available to anyone that was a physiotherapist or anyone that was a veterinary nurse or veterinarian. And so I went and did, it was a postgraduate certificate. So I went to the States and completed that and then came back and did my acupuncture certificate in the UK and then just started to focus on treating animals that had mobility and pain issues. Um, And eventually I worked for a few years still doing primary veterinary, um, but in 2007, I eventually just decided I'm just going to do veterinary rehabilitation. So for seven years, that's all I did, veterinary rehabilitation. It was one of my huge passions and it was, it's a very rewarding job. You get to, um, you know, have dogs that are paralyzed that you get to get, teach them how to walk again and dogs that are just about to be put down because they've got such bad pain and you're able to give them, extend their lives and give them improved mobility. That's awesome. Uh, so. Uh... Currently, do you? Uh, I know you run the the online business. You're going to be talking about a little bit later today. But yeah. you also own your own practice. Is it in where is it Cape Town? So I I actually had to close my practice down. Um, unfortunately, at the time when I was trying to make a shift in my profession, there were no qualified veterinary rehabilitation therapists in South Africa to take over it. Um, so it was very sad for me because I'd worked a lot to build it up, but I, it was a one man practice. And so when I had my second child, which was in 2014, I just made the decision that I couldn't carry on working the way that I was. Um, I was working really long hours and I missed a lot of milestones with my first child. And I think the deciding point was probably when after three days, I hadn't seen her awake. So I left before she woke up and came back home and she was asleep already. And sort of just said to my husband, this, this is not going to work because I have to find a different way to use my profession. And um, yeah, and so I closed my practice. So I haven't practiced now for 10 years, which is amazing. But when I say that I do a practice well, on my own dogs, because of course I've got dogs with hip dysplasia and horses with problems. And so I'm still treating animals, but they're just my own. Yeah, fair enough. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk about, um, you know, online. So what inspired you to start helping veterinary professionals diversify their incomes online? Yeah, at that time, when I was trying to make a shift, you know, I, I realized that I, I needed to find something that had a bit more flexibility because of my kids. And I actually dived into a few different things. Um, I actually developed some products and I had a factory that was making them, I was distributing them all around South Africa. Um, and um, I, I loved that and I enjoyed that. And it was a great way to, to sort of generate income online. It was a great way to generate income where you're not trading your time for money, which veterinary is very much like, you know, you, if you consult, then you get paid. And, you know, I remember in the days when I had my practice, if I had to go away or I had to get a locum, generally, you know, I wasn't able to draw a salary in that time. Um, so I needed to find something that even when I was away or with my kids, it was still generating income. And the the things that I didn't like about the physical products was all the, the problems with quality control, the problems with shipping the product, um, and then you have stock that goes dead and different sizes. And so I sort of just, from that time, I just kept on thinking, what could I do that is just going to be a whole lot easier that if we're traveling, my because my family and I love to travel, that I could just create and sell over again. And my husband actually came up with the idea because I, I had started doing a little bit of teleconsulting and um, I was teaching people the same thing over and over again. And he said, why don't you just put that into videos and just send that to them? Because you just repeat yourself every single time you have this teleconsult. And I actually started creating a, an online course and started creating PDFs. And that's how I sort of fell into the online world. And what I love about it is that you get to create something once. So if you create an online course, whether it's a video or a masterclass, 
or PDF, you create it once, but you can sell it over and over and over again. Um, and so it really just fitted in with the lifestyle that I was looking for. I was still able to use my veterinary degree because having studied for such a long time and obviously it being my lifelong dream, I still wanted to be able to help animals. And to be honest, now I actually feel, you know, in veterinary practice, I was so limited by my hands. You know, I could only treat a certain number of animals, whereas now I'm able to help so many pet owners and so many animals all over the world. Um, and I have no geographical limitations. So it just, yeah, it just really suited me. And I, and I dive straight into it. I just haven't looked back. No, absolutely. Um, let me, um, let's talk, spend a few minutes talking about onlinepethealth.com. That's a, you started it in 2017 and you have made it a pretty big initiative, right? You have a podcast with, you know, 15,000 downloads a month and thousands and thousands of paid and free members. So can you take a few minutes to explain what that is? I guess that's your, if I may first try at creating an online business, correct? Yeah. So I actually, before that, I had created an online course and some PDFs, which were for pet owners. And then what was actually happening is, I mean, I'd, I'd always intended to go back to practicing after having kids. So even though I was loving the online world, I when I when I decided I was going to stop consulting, it was always with the intention that this was just a sabbatical. And so obviously having specialized in rehabilitation, I wanted to keep up to date. And what actually happened was I was feeling like I wasn't keeping up to date. In South Africa, I was the main veterinarian that was lecturing in the field. And I used to attend online conferences. And we in the veterinary rehab field have an online conference, which is every two years. It's called the IABRPT conference. And I used to attend that. But every two years wasn't enough for me. And so the one day I was actually at one of these conferences and there was a workshop which I didn't register for. And I remember just regretting it so much. And I reached out to that lecturer and I actually said to him, you know, would you consider doing this as an online thing? Would you be able to teach this online? And he agreed. And it was never an intention of mine to actually start a business with it. It was really for my own need to improve my knowledge and to be a better vet rehab therapist. I just wanted to learn more. And I had read the textbooks from back to front and I was really just struggling to find more information. And so I came back to South Africa and there were a group of us had, you know, the field had grown a bit more in South Africa. And I reached out to all the vet rehab therapists and I said, who is interested in this online um, teaching? And it was on kinesio taping. Um, so, you know, like rock tape and how you, you know, do taping on animals. And there were nine of us and we said, yes, we're all going to do it. So I said to the lecturer, like, how much are you going to get paid? Like, how much do you need for teaching us this? And he gave me a fee. And then I just literally Googled how to host a webinar. And there was this company called Webinar Ninja. I don't even think they're around anymore. And I purchased one month's access to it. And I added that to his fee and divided it by nine. And I just winged it completely. I had no idea how to host a webinar. But this guy, um, Matt Brunke, he came online. And um, we did the first webinar. And what happened afterwards is everyone said, that was amazing. Can we do another one? And can we do one every month? So I said, yeah, sure. So the next month, I just emailed another lecturer that I could see. And it was actually one of the authors of our textbooks. And I said, could you lecture on a topic? And he gave me a topic. I said, perfect. And so the group of us then got together again. But this time, there were 16 people for the next month. And um, But I divided the amount by nine. So I made a little bit of money out of it. So I thought, OK. Well, maybe this could just be something I can do, help myself, but, you know, I can obviously be paid for my time. And then the next month we did one and we had a whole lot of people that said, I've got a friend in the UK. And somebody said, I've got a friend in New Zealand. Can they join? And it just started growing. And then the, the audience, actually, all the people that were coming to these webinars, I, I won at the end of the one of the webinars, I said, would you like me to do this like every single month for the rest of the year? And they said, yes. And then somebody said, please, can we pay monthly, though? So can you just work out what the whole year is and then divide it by 12 and we pay a monthly fee? And that's literally how my business started. 
And before I knew it, I had 200 members and they were from all over the world. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And it's, yeah, now we have over 600 hours of webinars on the platform. And we've been going for seven years. And we also host a conference every single year, an online conference called the Vet Rehab Summit. Um, yeah, and it's just gone from strength to strength, something that it started off with the need of myself. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been a lot of fun. That's amazing. So if I if you are trying to explain this to a layman, who is this for onlinepethealth.com? Who who is your you know a member, your paid member? Why would they sign up? What do they get out of yeah. it? Just give me the elevator pitch. So it is for veterinary rehabilitation therapists um, to do their continued professional development every single month. Um, so it's in the form of a subscription. So you pay a monthly fee or you can pay a yearly fee. It's up to you. And every single month you get new webinars that are loaded onto the platform. You get access to the online conference. You get access to training, business training. Um, and everything is on a platform where you can access all the recordings. So those 600 hours are available to all the members. And it's actually an, an amazing library now. So you can literally search your condition and be able to find whatever you need. The veterinary rehabilitation therapists um, are a combination of professions, um, usually veterinarians who specialize uh, or vet nurses who specialize. And then there is quite a new field of actual veterinary physiotherapists who've studied at university to be not a human physio, but a veterinary physio. That's just wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm really inspired by you. Like, you know, how <laughs> I love the fact that you're when you're young, somebody told you you can't be a veterinarian and uh, you believe that person, I guess, as a young, young person, but now you are the opposite. You just keep marching forward. Like anytime there's a challenge, you turn it into an opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, so what are the five most common ways to earn an income online as a veterinary professional? Yeah, so I think there are, there are different ways in which that you can. Um, for me, I want to sort of move away from trading time for money. So obviously, like teleconsulting is one, but then you're pretty much trading your time for money. So if we can concentrate on ones in which you've got an online business where you can start to potentially earn passive income, I don't really like that word because it's never passive. There's a lot of work that you have to put into it. Um, but the most common ways are to write an ebook or a PDF and then sell it. So you could either do this yourself, so write your own ebook on your own topic, or you can buy a, an, another person's product that's got private label rights. Um, so you can leverage other people's products. And what that means is that you're able to rebrand and edit that PDF and call it your own. So when you purchase it, you buy the rights to, to do that. The next way is with so, so online on the private label rights. Do you pay every time you sell that book? So let's say you sell 10 copies of that book. Do you pay that person who you got the private label rights from 10 times, whatever you amount you agreed, or is it just a one-time fee? No, it's just a one-time fee. You, so okay. you purchase the product, whatever you purchase it for, you can do whatever you want with it. You right. can give it away. You could sell it. Um, you could edit it completely. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. It's up to you. Got it. What's the third way? So, so the second, the second way, because I'll be just concentrating on the ones that are not trading time for money. So the second All way right. would be to create online courses. Um, and these can be in the form of videos. Um, and you can do things that are called sort of mini courses, which are a little bit shorter, or really complicated courses, which can be like really long. Like it can take somebody three months, six months to go through them. Um, and there are lots of different softwares nowadays that are so easy to use where you can load these videos up and you know host um, your online courses. And then the third way is a membership, which is like online pet health that we discussed. Um, so there are loads of memberships around. Um, there are ones for pet owners. Um, there are quite a lot actually in the agility uh, field. Um, so people that are either vets or veterinary physios that are helping pet owners um, to improve their dog's strength and to prevent injuries and give them exercises. Um, so yeah, that's a way that you could do it. Um, and then obviously a podcast or YouTube channel, like you've got a podcast, I've got a podcast, um, you can get ad revenue um, from your YouTube channel, sponsorships from your podcast. Um, I have 
my po- my podcast is actually sponsored now i think until 2026 um i've got people that are just waiting in line to sponsor there and so it's really great revenue um on a monthly basis if you can get, secure a sponsor every single month and then um the last one i'm going to forget what it is oh yeah it's actually as an affiliate um and this is a really easy way for veterinarians even now if they've got their own practices to start earning income, you can um, put them into PDFs, little links to sell products. Any product that you recommend, you can have an affiliate link if they've got a referral um, partnership um, program. And um, you can put this in your social media. You can have a page on your website where you have links um, to any of the affiliates, um, any products that you're an affiliate of. Um, and when you when you do an affiliate kind of marketing, you want to make sure that you are actually re, um, promoting products that you 100% believe in. So obviously never promote products that you just want, just so you can get money out of them. So there must be products that you are already promoting and you really feel like this is something that you can put your name behind. Um, because if you do promote a product and you know something goes wrong with it, then the person's going to come back to you and say, hey, you recommended that. Oh, absolutely. Um, what are some common challenges veterinary professionals face when trying to transition to online income streams? I mean, I know you sound made it sound simple. And I think for someone with your determination and persistence, I guess anything is simple. But a lot of people, when they start their own "quote unquote" in, you know income gener- passive income generating businesses, they don't succeed. Maybe they make a few hundred dollars, but they don't like make it into a full time income, right? So, uh, what are some challenges? I think the biggest challenge is that many professionals find themselves is the tech, um, because I think as a profession, we're not very tech. So, what is the biggest challenge? So, like the the tech. So the um, being able to be online, you know, like vets, veterinarians aren't very tech savvy, you know that. Oh, word. okay, got it. Yeah, um, I think as a profession, we're not tech savvy, so that is a bit daunting and a little bit overwhelming for them. Um, but you know, if I think back to when I started, I mean, I had to learn how to code my own website. You don't have to do that now. I mean, especially today, there is so there are so many softwares and so many. Um, ways in which you can generate income online. You can create a storefront, so easy. Websites, it really is so much easier than it used to be. So there are easy ways to do it. Um, And I don't think you need to be that tech savvy. Um, There are a lot of tutorials that show you exactly how to do it. I think one of the problems is is that uh, a lot of people that are trying to create passive income don't often invest in their knowledge. And so they try and go and learn on their own um, and I think that probably is a problem because they they waste a lot of time. And the problem is a lot of the vet professionals don't already have a lot of time to do this. So that is probably their biggest challenge is finding the time to start this online business on the side. Uh, that's how I started on the side. And I just did it a little bit, a little bit whenever I could. Um, so you really, really have to be good with time management. So I think maximizing your time, creating a schedule, making sure you know exactly what you need to do um, and just slowly go through it. Um, but there are loads of online courses that can help you. There are loads of people that teach um, how to start online businesses. They give step-by-step blueprints and guides. Um, so you really just have to find somebody that you align with and that can be your mentor to help you to get started. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Um, in your experience, um, how many online businesses? I know this is a tricky question. I'm just throwing it off at you. And if you, like, how many online businesses do you think make hundred thousand or more years started by veterinarians? Sure, that's a difficult thing to answer. <laughs> I yeah. don't know, but I can tell you that there are more than you think. Um, so half I a dozen, have, a dozen, you think, I mean, just based on your, oh no, thousands. Oh, thousands is it? Yeah. Yeah. The thing is with online, you've got no limitation to how much you can earn every single month. If you have a, if you create a great product and you've got a niche that there are enough people and you see that the, the thing with the, the, um, veterinary niches is, I mean, there are millions, billions of pet owners all over the world. And so you can have, you can have 500,000 people that are teaching one specific thing, and you're still going to reach enough people. 
Um, I think it's one of the things that people, they think that if somebody else is doing it, we can't do it. You know, somebody else is already teaching online hip dysplasia. That's not the case. I mean, if you go to the online space, how many people are teaching how to grow on Instagram? Right. Hundreds no, of I thousands. Think, uh, maybe, maybe. The challenge I find with especially veterinarians, right, doctors is they're used to a certain income, certain, you know, lifestyle, right? Now, when you yeah. start an online business, you go back to zero and you're making maybe 50 bucks in the first month, right? In your case, yeah. like you said, you had a course and you didn't make any money the first time you did it. Then you made a little bit of money, right? Maybe if 100 bucks or something. So like letting go of that regular stream of income that is meaningful, right? Because you are a doctor to go back to like making 50, 100 bucks. A lot of people like give up at some point. I'm not saying everywhere. I'm not, I'm not talking about the entire world. I'm just talking about veterinary veterinarians who end up starting, you know, these kind of businesses. Yeah, listen, I, that's going to be with any business, right? You yeah. start a business from the start and you, you stop your other work. Um, you know, and most businesses that you start on profitable for the first two years. Online business, you actually have the opportunity to be prof profitable from the first month because your costs are so low. You don't have overheads. You know, my suggestion is always to start it on the side. So to start this on the side and get to, to a point where you think, okay, I can actually support myself with this amount and then I can put all my time and energy into it. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so I started it as a side hustle. And then eventually when I was pregnant with my second child, I decided, okay, I'm going to go full tilt into this. And I, I didn't have an option because I was pregnant and I was unable to work. So that's what I did. And, and it's, it's doable. But the thing is, is that you can't give up. <laughs> You've got to keep trying. And yeah. eventually what happens is, and you know, I, I think this is the case with a lot of people, like not just veterinarians, people that are online. You hear all these stories about YouTubers that went for <laughs> five, six years and nothing happened. And then suddenly they yeah. create something that goes off and then they take off. Um, and it's that, you know, that book, The Tipping Point. Yeah, There's a point at which it's going to tip. And you can give up before then, but if you just keep going, you're going to reach that tipping point and it's going to happen. I mean, for myself now, I earn a whole lot more than I would if I was a veterinarian, if I had my own practice, if I was working for, for somebody else. Um, so on the online business for me, definitely financially is a lot more lucrative and I work a whole lot less hours. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, for me, it's it's work, but I I have been that person who just said, okay, well, this has to work, so I just kept going. But like I said, I think the thing is is to find somebody, a mentor that can help you. And I think a lot of the people that give up, they don't follow any structure, they don't follow any systems, they just see other people doing it, and then they try to emulate what they're doing, but they don't actually see all the back end and all everything that actually goes behind the online business because you got to set you got to set yourself up for success. So there's a whole lot of fundamentals that you need to know in order to be successful. Um, and you can either learn by trial and error. And to be honest, that's what I did in the very beginning. And then right. eventually I decided, okay, I'm going to invest in an online course to help me with this. And as soon as I did that, literally three months later, not even, probably two months later, I generated an in enough income in one day to pay for that online course. And it just took off from there. So as soon as I, I invested in my knowledge and actually got some guidance, then things started to take off. And since then, I I've been, I mean, I invest in courses all the time. Every single month, I'm buying a new course to learn more about online business, whether it be messaging, email marketing, um, how to grow on social media. I just continually learn. Right. Yeah, I think um, you, you kind of hit it on the head, right? Like you 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 love this and you continue to invest in it, continue to learn, uh, keep going. Like you said, there's a tipping point. There's so many tips you shared today as to what separates the the ones who make it from the ones who don't. And also you didn't start it to make money. You, 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 you put that course together because you wanted that information, that knowledge. So a lot of these people who end up really succeeding, they, they it's almost like they're creating a solution for themselves. Like they have a problem and the, and the business is their response to that problem. Uh, yeah. they are in, in their own creative way so it's more than just oh hey I don't make any money so I'm going to give up I'll keep going okay if I, if I can you know do this with 
one course can i do it with two okay so just almost like a game you just keep keep growing and keep improving and stuff so so much uh, wisdom in your experience especially over the last you know since uh, 2007 when you went full time with your online business um just some uh, a place to get started where do you think people could get started what are some of the first things you would tell them when they're thinking about an online business yeah so the the thing is actually is just to start all right and you can start by either creating your own ebook and you can buy somebody else's private label rights ebook but you just got to start so either start by on your own or find a mentor or someone that can help i actually have a group called the vetney professionals making money online group it's a facebook group and it's a great place to start you can come and join us there we have a whole lot of veterinary professionals there that are starting online businesses it's a great place to network um so you can come and join us there i do facebook lives there and you yeah, i can help and direct you if you want to reach out to me you most welcome um you can um go to my website at drmegankelly.com um i actually have a really cool um blueprint which actually teaches you how to use um private label rights products um so if you're happy for me to share that link now and I can share that and people can go there download it and it gives them step by step instructions how to start with a private label rights product absolutely yeah i would love to have those links we'll add it to the show notes so everyone can easily get to them so please include your your website uh, the links you talked about uh, you know and we'll we'll definitely share that share that with everyone what are some misconceptions veterinary professionals might have about starting an online business and how do you address them i think the biggest one is that they have to do everything themselves from the start um and you really really don't you don't have to create your own products you can use other people's products and you know there's not only private label rights products there are also products that have got master resale rights which you can use which are like online courses that you can sell and um, i think one of the things people also think is that they have to have a huge social media following to be able to do this you really really don't you need like if you there's a, there's actually a book called a thousand true fans and it talks about how if you just got a thousand true people that are your fans that are following you you can actually have a business online and a thousand people following you really is all you need you just need to focus on a specific niche um so choose a specific niche don't go too broad and and you can really be able to help people and educate them and support them i think another one is um that you have to have the tech skills that you have to be some type of tech genius in order to be able to have an online business and um that really isn't the case anymore there are so many all in one softwares that literally are drag and drop websites um so so many easy ways um in which to start your online business yeah i mean on on the on your point about 1000 true fans i totally you know agree with that i think one reason why a lot of businesses give up halfway through or fail is we all know the end game right which is to make money or make a profit so we are so focused on the end game we don't realize there are so many other steps we have to take before we get to that point so for example you need people who know you like you and trust you about something so the thousand true true friends is is an example or or Uh, or an, uh, another way of explaining it if you have a thousand people who think you know more about xyz topic or you are the best at xyz now they are willing to buy from you because they respect you they trust you they think of you as the expert so so unfortunately you cannot sell a product till people really know like and trust you so as a marketing person i i understand exactly what you're saying and i totally agree i think uh, sometimes you have to like not have the big goal like when your goal was really simple i wanted to do a course because i wanted to learn it and instead of me paying the whole you know fee i just want my nine friends to pay for it also so you just solve a simple problem and then you figure out okay how do i do this you know with some other person and and then all of a sudden there was 16 and you made a tiny bit of profit you didn't try to boil the ocean you know when you were going to the next step just thought about what the next step is and the next step is tiny bit more challenging than the previous step but it's not daunting it's not like oh I'm going to go from doing one course to having a business that's making $100,000 tomorrow. You know, that's not how you thought. So that ability to just keep taking the next step, a tiny next step. You know, it's like driving at night, right? Just go to the next 500 meters and then you will see the following 500 meters or 100 meters and then keep keep going. 
Anyways. One thing that really also amazes me about veterinarians is that they always say, I've got nothing to teach. <laughs> and they don't realize <laughs> that they teach every single day in the consult room. Um, yeah, so, I mean, one thing I'd love to just challenge you guys is just to think about, like, what what are your expertise? Like, what are the things that you're good at? And you you think you maybe you're a general practitioner, you think that there's nothing, but there is. There is a specific type of case that you are actually really good at. Um, and you you might have a case, maybe you're good at skin cases. Maybe whenever there's a skin case, all your colleagues come and ask you advice about it. And you, a lot of the, a lot of the vet professionals that are my students, they, they don't even think about that they're good at anything. You know, I think this is, this is imposter syndrome, you know, um, and um, there's so many things that we can teach and pet owners are raving information i mean i just look at the forever dog with uh, rodney habib and karen becker i mean that book sold 150,000 copies in in the very first week um, and that just shows that pet owners are they want information and they're prepared to pay for it um, and so right now one of the big problems i see is that we have a lot of people doing online businesses and selling ebooks that are actually are not veterinarians. The, the majority of people that have online businesses are pet owners that have been searching for the information, haven't found it, created their own websites, and are educating other pet owners. But it should be us. We should be the ones that should be educating. I mean, we are the, we're the ones with the qualifications, but most of us don't have time to do it. Or we are sort of fixated on practice and and I, I mean, I was one of those people in the beginning. I remember thinking I can only be a vet. This is, and I remember my family being like shocked when I said I'm going to stop <laughs> practicing. You know, and um, but the thing is, is that there are lots of ways to be a vet, and you can be a vet online, and um, you can help people. And you know, one of the things you said, which which really resonated with me, and it's that, and and I, and I think that a lot of those people who are struggling, they're chasing the money. Okay. You got to get back to your passion of helping animals and as a vet. Exactly. And when you're creating content and you're putting it out there online and you're sharing, it's never about what how much money you're going to make. It's about how many animals or how many people you're going to be able to help that can help the animals. And that's how you have to see it. You have to see it as you're like back as a veterinarian. You're not this business owner that's just trying to grow an empire, you know, and if you, if you change your mindset that way, you will only succeed because when you're out there serving and helping, um, you just attract the right people and your business will grow. You're absolutely right. I think that's a great, great place to end this podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Kelly. You are such an inspiration. Just talking to you, your wisdom comes through and, you know, it's, uh, it's just, you know, succeeding in business is not easy especially when you create your own thing right as opposed to you work for somebody else or do what everybody else does when you're charting your own path it's like you know going to a new country like people came to america hundreds of years ago and you know figured out how to make everything work right like and new laws new constitution new everything right they just figured everything out from scratch uh, but when it does work it works beautifully so um so i do think uh, you are an inspiration so thank you for being here I also want to take a moment to thank our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you. We cannot do what we do without you. So if you like this podcast, I, I hope you do. I definitely enjoyed it. Please share it with your colleagues and friends on social media. And of course, don't forget to write a review for us on iTunes or YouTube Music. Your reviews will help other doctors and practice owners find us. Until next time, keep striving for excellence and making a positive impact on the lives of your patients and pet parents. Wishing all of you an amazing week ahead.